Benvenuti listeners, this is the Anglo-Italian Connection Football Podcast. I'm Tommaso Dami. And I'm Rory Crisqualo. And guess what? We finally reached 100 followers on Instagram. Woo! Therefore, we changed our handles. Right now, you can find us on Instagram by typing Anglo-Italian Pod. And on Twitter? It's Italian Anglo Pod, because somebody stole the handle we wanted. Who is it? We got to find I that don't guy. know. I, I don't know how much we have to pay for it, though. We'll have to find out. <laughs> how are you doing today, Rory? I'm good. I'm full of Monster and beer and 12 hours work. And I'm currently watching Arsenal make very hard work of Rapid Vienna. So I'm torn emotionally. And you are going to sleep over at my house because you cannot We're having walk... a sleepover. <laughs> yes, because you cannot walk around after curfew, which is from 11 p.m. until 5 a.m. in Milan. Yeah, so no longer able to go home. Um, both a blessing and a curse. I'm sure Tommy's hospitality will be fine. Yeah, it I'll let be. you know next week, listeners. What are you doing right now besides having drank a full can of Monster and drinking beer? Uh, I'm currently watching Arsenal struggle. We're looking okay. Um, it's coming up to half time. Um, not much has happened. Really, not much has happened. Thomas Partey obviously looks great, uh, but I would say that. And the big news is Dundalk are currently top of the group. Um, come on the town. They are one nil up against Mulder. So are they your shirt shout team? out to the, it's the town my mum was from. Okay. So always keep an eye out for them. And when the draw was made that they were going to be playing Arsenal, I thought this is, this is sick. Oh, this is when are they great. playing again? Uh, sorry, when? Yeah. Um, I know. think we've got them up next. I think, um, I'd have to double check that, but anyway, it'll be, it's a shame fans can't go. It really is. Cause it'd be great for Arsenal fans to go over to Ireland and for the Irish to come over to London would, would have been a great occasion. Yeah. But still, good to see the town top of the Europa League group as it stands. Good how are you, guys. Tommy? Sorry. Yes, uh, how am I? Uh, all right, guys. This I'm going to take time a while, it. guys. No, I'm going to time it. It's okay. I've got a timer in front of me. Listen to my rant about Inter Milan. Okay, deep breath. Let's go. All right. So, two wins, two draws, one loss. It's not the beginning that Inter Milan fans like myself were expecting. But guys, right, this is a rant. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. I've, I've gotten back on Twitter and I'm reading stuff that is really making me fume. It feels like everything at Inter is going to shit when it's clearly not. Okay, so let's start from the weekend. We lost the derby against AC Milan. That's always bitter. But guess what, guys? We played a good game and that was the first defeat against AC Milan in four years. I think if it wasn't as, as good as Lukaku was, if it wasn't for Lukaku's performance that night, Inter would have won that game. Then, last night, I got heated big time because we should have won that game. There is no excuse around it. You cannot lose a, you cannot draw a game like that. What are what are interest issues at the moment? Rory, you can jump in whenever you want. This is a rant, but you can jump There's in. There's a few of them. Yeah. All right. Number one, mindset. Why do we get why do we get shaky legs on big nights? We need a better mindset, more grit, more concentration. Every year in the Champions League, in my opinion, in the group stage, there is a key group stage match. Two years ago, when we were in the group with Tottenham and Barcelona, the key game was when we played Barcelona at the San Siro. Messi was not playing. We tied 1-1. We had multiple occasions to win that game, but we didn't. And guess what? We didn't make it to the round of 16. Last year, the key game was in Dortmund. We were up 2-0 at halftime and we lost the 3-2. This year, the key game was last night because Real Madrid lost against Shakhtar Donetsk, and that's your opportunity. Every game in the Champions League is crucial. That was our opportunity to jump ahead and have a win in the first game. And guess what? We didn't. Rory, do you want to say something? <laughs> yeah, no, this is something, obviously, I, I've been lucky enough to go to, uh, to the San Siro on Champions League nights, and I've witnessed how terrified the team looks on these key nights. It's always on the big occasion they look petrified. Now, Maybe from a naive point of view, I always thought it was the crowd in the stadium. It was getting too much, a lot of expectation. But even with the place empty, they looked terrified. And I don't know if they've got players in that team who have won things. They've got kind of winners in the team. So you think the mentality should be there. The, the mentality of Conte is definitely a winner, right? Yeah, winning mentality, I, think, I agree. So the mentality should be there. So I don't know what it is that, that happens to them. Obviously, Tommy, it's the first game of the group. Yeah, no, I know, I know, I know. But let me keep going because Barella and Akimi, they played very well against AC Milan. 
but they had two clear chances to score a goal yeah, and the they Barabba didn't. Was bad. Yeah. We cannot allow, we cannot afford to make those mistakes in the, in, at the end of the field when we're almost ready to score a goal. And last night, Vidal playing in front of the defense was just horrible. That was a Champions League disaster from Vidal's part. I understand why he was playing in front of the defense because Eriksen was forward. He was playing behind the attack. But still, that's not an excuse. This is a matter of mindset, of grit and concentration. Our defense has looked horrible until now. I'm not trying to make up excuses. But at the same time, for all of you pessimistic Inter fans, our defense was pretty much all out for COVID. Skriniar, Bastoni, Young, and now we've got Akimi too. Kolarov, he's a very experienced player. He shouldn't make mistakes like the tackle on Ibrahimovic in the derby, but that's not his natural position. He's a left back. He has had to make up for the absences. Ultimately, you're asking a 37-year-old to play in a different position to what he's played his whole career in, right? Number three, stop making that big of an issue about Eriksen. I'm very glad that last night <laughs> Cambiasso stood up for him. He defended him live on Italian television on Sky Italy. He said that... Ericsson, and I agree with you, him is a world-class player and people speak without thinking. I agree with that. Stop making a case when there is not. We will talk later about cases yes. in different yeah. teams and how they're handled. I think that Christian Ericsson, this rant is a little longer than I had <laughs> expected, but he's used, like at Tottenham, he was used to run behind quite a bit. At Inter, he's still getting used to that. He's got Lukaku who can like provide yeah, for him yeah, yeah. in that situation. But at the same time, it's a different league. If you guys watch a Premier League game and the Serie A game, Premier League is all about running, big spaces, a Serie A, it's about tactics. And finally, number four, don't forget that we've had a bunch of bad luck. So a lot of close chances, a lot of close chances, great saves last night from Sommer as this well. This happens to every team, man. I'm I just going to say that. The, <laughs> just, 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 and the, <laughs> then the referee in the derby was awful. There was no offside on Inter's. <laughs> Now we're, getting in, now we're getting into excuses. Now no, we're getting into excuses. But there was not an offside when Inter were awarded a penalty. And then there was an unseen red card for Kessi. And that's always a red card because Chiesa got a red card for that when he was playing for Juventus against Crotone last weekend. And two years ago when we played Juve in a key game, <laughs> Vecino, stop, Roy, let me speak. Vecino got a red card for the exact same foul. Positives about Inter this year. Lukaku is a beast. He's the best big man in Europe. He can play with his back to goal and he delivers all the time. So stop whining. We're a good team. And number two, just number, just no, keep five, believing. I think we're <laughs> keep believing, guys. And don't rip on Conte because what he's done at Inter is great. I haven't loved, I didn't love when he whined after the Europa League lost the final, but the players listen to him. The players believe in him. And after the derby, after the loss, once again, never forget that Conte always stands up for his players. He said they played a great game, which in my opinion they did. And he always takes the blame on himself. I'm done with my rant. Stop whining, guys. Okay, good. Just to like punctuate that, I would say Twitter is the absolute worst place to go for kind of measured opinions. I think... Arsenal Twitter is as bad as anywhere for hysterical reactions to things, which, again, we'll come to later. But, yeah, I think... Um, it, does it feel good to get it off your chest? Yes, it okay, does. Okay, good. Thanks. We said it in the podcast preview that we would use this space it's also be a to rant. get a, it's yeah, a, I'm sorry. It's, a, it's a therapy session. Forza Inter, at the end of the day. Yeah, Forza yeah, Inter. Yeah, I yeah, believe yeah. in you guys, but I fine. don't like to see the supporters of my same team, like my brothers, just... Just talk nonsense. Guys, we're looking good. It's the beginning of the season. We can make it. If we create this negative environment around the team, we're going to do badly. And I think we're ready for the Euro review. I think we're ready to go. I think, <laughs> I think Tommy's ready to go. All right. Let's kick it with the Euro review. Let's go. Hello, listeners, and welcome to the Euro review. So... Starting off this week, we are looking at how every table across the major leagues in Europe looks a bit weird so far. It's not how you'd expect it. Right. <laughs> okay, so let's start. Guess what league I'm well, thinking of. We'll leave that till the end. We're going to start with... So, I'll take you through it. In Spain, at the top, we have Real Sociedad, or Real Sociedad, right? In France, we have Lille. In Germany, it's RB Leipzig. In England, it's, of course, Everton. And then in Italy, we have the unbeaten AC Milan. 
right? Yeah, it's looking pretty interesting. We've got to say that none of these leads are really big leads. Like Real Sociedad are leading one point over Real Madrid. They're even with VRL. In France, Lille PSG... one point ahead, right? Yeah, PSG are only two points behind Lille. In uh, Germany, we've got Bayern Munich just one point behind Leipzig. So and, all the big teams are yeah. on the horizon. But in a week where they've been talking about the big six, the big teams deserve to be at the top no one should be touching them it's just i wanted to highlight the fact that at the moment none of them are in quotes where they should be yeah so i think it's quite interesting it shows that some of the bigger teams with arguably larger squads and deeper squads haven't started as well as they should have where the teams with less resources are kind of well showing they're showing their real um their real power right so i think which is the beauty about football meritocracy you well, play say, well exactly. you're top of the table exactly yeah. if you're not picking up points then stuff you right yeah. so that's the first part but we're gonna neatly lead on or i don't know how neat that was but we're gonna neatly lead on to ac milan well they are the only uh in the top five leagues in europe they are the only big name on mm-hmm. top of their yeah, table yeah. And, uh, all right, I'm at the end of the day, I'm an impartial supporter. And I've got to say that AC Milan's run has been quite impressive. They're the league leaders. They're undefeated in 20 games since the end of COVID. Um, since June 12th, they tied nil-nil against Juve in Coppa Italia. And they haven't lost a game since. What, why? Why has this happened? I honestly think the, a huge portion of it is the Ibrahimovic effect. He's scored 16 goals in 23 games in all competitions. Yeah, 16 wow. goals in 23 games. I was surprised to read that number. But um, um, yeah, he, I think that he's actually brought the grit that AC Milan have needed for quite some time. He's brought it to the team. Leao, I remember the first game he played alongside Ibrahimovic against Cagliari. I'm going by heart. I, yeah, yeah, I yeah, might yeah. have to double check, but I'm pretty sure that was the first game when Ibrahimovic was back. He looked like a different player. Yeah. And we also saw in the Milan Derby how confident AC Milan looked even when the game was favoring Inter. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. Inter were attacking more, AC Milan absolutely dominated, especially at midfield. Kessi, he should have had a red card, in my opinion, in many people's opinion, but he had an incredible game. The defense, I, 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 I would have... Never thought that I could say something like this, but Kjaer is looking much better than Romagnoli at the moment. Romagnoli was looking a little shaky in the mm-hmm. derby, especially the matchup against Lukaku was no match for him. But yeah, um, AC Milan have got a lot of options this year. They've got a squad depth. There is that uh, that guy that uh, arrived in uh, January, sales makers. Uh, I oh, yeah, don't yeah, really yeah. know the how to pronounce Belgian his name. Guy, right? Yeah, Belgian, and he's, yeah, yeah. he's been doing pretty well. He's an offensive midfielder. The only thing I would say to AC Milan is watch out don't get <laughs> overly confident right. there was that incident with calabria i don't know if you saw after the ac milan derby they were all hugging each other the ac milan players to celebrate the win and he was caught like t- like showing a middle finger towards the interest bench okay. guys you've won the first derby in four years <laughs> i honestly i love to see that the Teams from my city are doing well, but don't get overly confident. The season is long. Inter Milan have a great squad. Juventus are always title favorites. Napoli are looking very good. They are. And problem. then there are Atalanta, yeah. Sassuolo. It's going to be an interesting Serie A. And uh, so, yeah, good luck, AC Milan. I'm, I'm actually saying that, but don't get overly confident. Yeah. So carrying on with the um, the strange teams at the top of the table, we wanted to talk about, obviously in one of our episodes, we talked about which team, which transfers we thought would be the most successful. And now we're going to take a quick look back and just be like, okay, which transfers so far have seemed like the best? Let's start from England. So in England, I think you can't look much further than Aston Villa at the moment. Um, they have only conceded two goals um, so far, both to Liverpool. In every other game, they've kept a clean sheet. Who's and their I goalkeeper? Think well, this is it, right? They've signed Martinez from Arsenal, and I love Leno, but he conceded another goal at the weekend where he punched it straight into the path of the striker. He seems to do it a lot. And there's a lot of Arsenal fans wondering if he sold the same, the wrong goalkeeper. I'm not saying that, but I can understand how some fans would think that. And he has been incredible for Aston Villa. Of course, on his debut, saved a penalty. Only conceded two goals. Incredible. And the player who has really shone for them so far is Ross Barkley, okay? Coming in from Chelsea looked like a strange deal. Nobody heard, nobody knew anything about it. It was just announced. And him and Grealish on the left have just formed a great partnership on and off the pitch. They seem like they're best mates off the pitch. 
which isn't surprising if you know a bit about their personalities. And on the pitch, he scored the winner in the 